Good morning, church. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good. 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 Welcome. Uh, my name is Judy Schindel, and I'm the pastor here at Cross Church United Methodist Church. And it is good to be back in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. We are excited that you are here. Um, we welcome any guests that we have today. We are so excited that you are joining us for worship. And it is a beautiful day to celebrate Confirmation Sunday. Uh, so as we begin and prepare for worship, let us turn our thoughts and our hearts toward God as we stand and praise God with our first song, Living Hope.
day of celebration. It is Confirmation Sunday, and we are so excited to celebrate our youth who will be making a profession of faith and joining the church today as full members. A special thanks to Nate Bramble, our director of youth and young adults. He has been teaching these students since January, um, taking them through classes about what it means to uh, believe in God, what it means to follow Christ, what it means to be a part of the church and to be United Methodist. Uh, we also want to say thank you to Nancy Christmas, Nancy Christman and Debbie Carney, who serve as our mentors and to help lead the classes. We have four students who finished the class, and it was their decision to choose if they were ready to make that profession of faith, to make that decision and be confirmed. And we're so excited that Kaito and Luka Okafor are joining today. Uh, Macy Page was planning to also uh, join today, but there was an illness in her family, and she wanted to wait until everyone could be together. So we will uh, celebrate, baptize, and confirm her at another day. There will be a reception immediately following today's service where you can congratulate Kaito and Luka and welcome them officially as members of Crossroads United Methodist Church. So once the service is over, go ahead straight out to the portico uh, to have some refreshments and be able to celebrate with them. I also want to let you know that there is a children's pop-up event today with Miss Ginger, and that is at 12.30, so you will want to join her for some fun, for a lesson, and a chance to be together. Now, as we continue in worship today, let us turn our thoughts to God with a word of prayer. Holy and loving God, because of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, we have been given a brand new life and a glorious future. Let us come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving, with laughter and song. We give thanks to you this day in your holy and precious name. Amen. Please join me in affirming our faith and what we believe as Christians and Methodists with the Apostles Creed. I believe in God as one of our mind, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he is seated in heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the dead he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit.
be were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many of own lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And good morning, church. It is great. It's great to see you all. It's so good to be back here in person in the sanctuary. And on my drive up, I was thinking it's also great to be here when it's not 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> like 40 degrees outside. I'll the last week was it's amazing. But it's good to be in the building. Um, and I thought it was so fitting that the lectionary passage that Kaito just read for us is a passage all about community and all about being together. And this is our first Sunday back in the church together. And it's also our first Confirmation Sunday in several years where we get to bring new members, two incredible members, into our church. Now, my goal for today in the sermon is to talk about what it means to be a part of the church. And not just for you, Kaito and Buka, but for all of us to reimagine and rethink what it means to be the church and what it means to be a member of the church. When I was first reading through this passage in Acts, my first immediate thought was this is what it means to be the church. This is exactly what God's plan was for the church. And I reread it a couple of times, and I was surprised that the word church never comes up in that passage. It talks about a community, and it talks about a group that was of one heart and one soul, but it never says that was the church. And as we think of what it means to be the church today, I want us to kind of get out of the mindset of what we usually think when we think of church. I think before we talk about what church is, we should talk about what it is not. Because church is not just a building, as much as we might think or associate it with a sanctuary. And church is also not just one day a week, uh, a Sunday or a Wednesday that you come to church. And if we think of what God's plan for church is from that kind of narrow lens, we're missing some of the power that comes from what it means to be the church. Because I think God's plan for the church, as we see in this community in Acts, is for us to be a community that's of one heart and of one soul. And an overlying theme of uh, that chapter in Acts, so right before what we read, is all about boldness. It talks about being bold. It says that the church and the apostles prayed for a sense of boldness to come about. And what does it mean for us to be bold as church members? Because I believe to be a bold church member means to truly know that you belong here. To truly know that you are a member of this church just because you're a child of God. And to be comfortable leading and just being a part of this congregation. And so I really do believe that God calls us as a community to be a church that is bold. And it's funny because speaking of bold, in the passage it talks about all of the members sold their possessions together so that no one was in need. And uh, when I was reading, I was imagining trying to sell either my PlayStation or my car or something to help people in need and wondered how I would even get to church if I were to sell that. But I want us today to focus less on the idea of uh, physical possessions when we talk about selling um, and giving of things so that no one is needed more what we have to offer as people. I imagine if we were to look at that community, if we were to look at that first church, everyone I think knew that they belonged there and, and the God-given gifts and the things that made them unique, I think they openly shared it with the community to make sure that no one was in need. If someone was in need, if someone needed comfort, Someone who really felt like they were gifted as a caretaker probably went and gave them care. And so, if you believe, as I do, in Genesis 1, 27, it says that we were all created in the image of God. Which means that we were all intricately and intentionally designed. We all, whether we believe it or not, or feel it all the time or not, we have God-given gifts and talents that we have to offer. 
And I found it interesting in this passage in Acts, nowhere does it say the age of the people in the church. Nowhere does it say the gender. Nowhere does it say their job, the amount of money they had. All that it says is they were of one heart and of one soul. And whatever small thing we might be using of how we think we identify that holds us back from being able to fully feel like we belong and fully lead, I just want to call that a lie today. That every single one of us are a member of this congregation and have the role to play. But one of the biggest things, again, that can hold us back from this boldness and from sharing who we are meant to be is thinking that we don't belong. When I was in high school, I was on the cross-country team. Are there any other runners in the house? I'm not sure. We got one in the back, but I go. <laughs> so I was on the cross-country team, and um, I was not the fastest runner. Now, by surprise, you might not. I was not the fastest runner. I was not even the top 10 fastest runner. And to be honest, I was not even on the top 25 fastest <laughs> runners on my team. But I was on the team, you know? I loved it. And I enjoyed doing the cross-country team just because my friend group was in. I loved being able to share in the community and the fellowship that came from being on the team. Every Friday night before a meet, we had a pasta party at someone's house where we would just eat a bunch of pizza or pasta and get to be together. I loved it. But by my senior year on the team, I began to like feel a sense of ownership that I wanted to do something more. And so one day early in the season, I went to my coach after practice and I said, Coach, you and I both know there is no way that I'm going to be on the varsity team. I'm not going to be a top runner. But I feel like I want to do something. Could I be the JV captain of the team? The junior varsity captain, kind of like the B squad. And my, co my coach responded, yes, but just so you know, it's not actually a real position. <laughs> and, and I just took that as a yes, and I won with it. Um, but what I learned that year as being maybe an unofficial captain for the junior varsity team is I began to take a sense of ownership for what I was on the team. I don't even know if my teammates knew that I was a junior captain. They probably did not. But I did in my head, and that kind of changed the way that I acted. I was able to realize some of my God-given gifts. If you've met me and had a chance to talk, I am a very enthusiastic person. I also like to talk a lot. Um, <laughs> And I was able to learn how those are not just characteristics that I have, but those are gifts that I was able to use to kind of craft a sense of community around the JV team. And that year I was able to learn, for me, leadership. I like to lead from more of a friendship perspective and less from a place of authority. But that was something I don't think I would have ever learned if my coach had not given me kind of that false uh, sense of authority that he gave me. And as we look as ourselves today as members of the church, it's very easy, because I'm in this place too a lot, for us to identify almost as a JV member of the church. I think it's easy to think and to look around and say, there's people who are better speakers, there's people who are more spiritual than I am, there's people who are older and who have been through more than I have. Um, it's easy to look at a vars varsity members of the congregation, whether it be the worship band or Pastor Julie, you can see it's easy to put pressure on other people and kind of take a step back. But I believe God's intention for the church and what he's saying in the passage, and even for you two, Kaitone Buka on Confirmation Sunday, I hope that you guys realize that you belong here exactly how you are. You were, you were created to contribute into this group just in all of us as equals together. That, that year on Cross Country, I realized my identity was not a JV runner. My identity was a member of that team. In the same way, our identity together are members of the church. We're children of God, and we are called to be a one heart, one soul. And so as, as I close, I wanted to be able to highlight some of the specific gifts and call out the things that I saw from our four incredible confirmants this this year. As uh, Pastor Julie said, the Confirmands put a lot of great effort into meeting on Sundays from January 24th pretty much until last week or two weeks ago. They would meet and we would talk for an hour and a half just about God and learn about theology and who God is and who he made us to be and what it means to be a member of the church. And so I want to be able to call out just the greatness I saw in all four of these students. So to start with Macy Page. Macy was the, by far, or by several years, the youngest member in our group. 
She was the only one who was in middle school. But you would have never guessed that for a minute. Macy possessed such a belief about herself and such a confidence that when she would answer or speak up, it helped other people also believe in themselves and believe in her as well. And she holds just such a great power of belief. And as well as Sadie Moon, I also saw a great deal of belief in Sadie, um, but also a great deal of courage. Sadie really was able to speak her mind and say what she was feeling, which just blew me away. And a lot of times in our group discussions, Sadie would be the first one to talk and it would lead to openness and vulnerability from others as well. That's just a great trait I saw. And for Kaito and Buka, first of all, you are like the two nicest guys I've ever met, so I think that's more on the parents. Great work. <laughs> you guys have done an incredible job with them. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> But um, first, Buka, you showed such like a sense of commitment. Every time you were there or showed up, I could tell that you really put your all into what you're doing. Not only with confirmation, but when we would talk about soccer, I know both of you love soccer so much. I can see the commitment and the amount of like how much your word matters. When you say you will do something, you will do it to the best of your ability. And that's just an amazing quality. And Kaito, you possess leadership and gentleness. Um, I think a lot of times in our society today, gentleness can be mistaken for weakness, and it is not at all. You are intentionally so kind and allow other people to really feel known and welcome in spaces that you're in. Um, and it's just such an incredible gift that God has given you. So both of you, I hope you understand and realize that God has given you gifts and abilities that make you incredible members of the church today. Like not in four years from now, but like you are ready to serve and you are equipped. And so for a congregation as a whole, um, I hope you are so, I hope you understand how incredible these two members we're getting today are. Um, but I hope also you would take this challenge of being um, a, a true member of the church and even being able to call out the good you see in other members of the church as well, um, just as I was able to do for our congregants. So now we can kind of transition into the super exciting part of today where we actually get to confirm uh, Kaito and Luca. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we are given a new birth through water and spirit. And all of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the affirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared in our baptism, acknowledging what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Kaito and Luca, you have already been baptized, but remember your baptism and be thankful. Congregation, those of you who have been baptized, remember that you are baptized and be thankful. Remember that you are full and faithful members of this church and reaffirm your commitment this day as we celebrate with these young men and welcome them into our family. Guys, would y'all please come step forward, come and stand right here with us. Yeah, y'all have some sorry. All right, Kaito and Luca, I just have some questions for you guys today. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you. Are you prepared as God gives you light and strength to turn from sin in your lives? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church? which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of, church, of Christ's holy church 
and serve as Christ's representatives to the world. Parents, do y'all want to come and stand behind them? You can place a hand on their shoulders. Kaito, the Lord defend you with heavenly grace. And by the Spirit, confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Luca, the Lord defend you with heavenly grace. And by the Spirit, confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand? As members of Christ's universal church, Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And as members of this congregation of Crossroads United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care these people whom this day we receive into the membership of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And I ask you to repeat after me at this time. We rejoice to recognize you. We rejoice to recognize you. As members of Christ's Holy Church. As members of Christ's Holy Church. And bid you welcome, and bid you welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. To this congregation of the United Methodist Church. Would you re renew our vows? Would you re renew our vows? To uphold it by our prayers. To uphold it by our prayers. Our presence. Our presence. Our gifts. Our gifts. Our service. Our service. And our witness. And our witness. With God's help. With God's help, we will so order our lives. We will so order our lives after the example of Christ. After the example of Christ, that surrounded by steadfast love, that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in faith. You may be established in faith and confirmed and strengthened. And confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. In the way that leads to life eternal. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in celebrating our new members? Yeah. You may return to your seats, and I invite you all to join us in our final song as we celebrate together with the song.
Lord, your summons echoes true. 